Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 41, where you email me your questions about Flat Earth to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And if I can't read them on Strange World, which is on Tuesday nights on Truth Frequency Radio, I will do it here. So let's get right to it. First one is called Massive Fan, Please Help. Hi, Mark. Can I ask, have you seen the video of Jack Parsons, otherwise known as IPS, reading a statement claiming to be you? I know he was claiming to be Math Powerland when he was on the news report about the Flat Earth billboard, and he is using your name. Do you know what is going on? Regards, Guy. Uh, yeah, Guy, I actually do, and that is IPS. His channel when he was doing that wasn't wasn't that big, and so he just wanted to expose more people to flat Earth. So he mentioned my name, which is perfectly fine with me. You guys want to use my name instead of your own? You know, just want to keep your identity low key for a while. That's fine. I, I've I've got no problem with that whatsoever because if it if it helps the community, then absolutely. Now don't blow up a building, and wearing a I am a Mark Sergeant T-shirt that that would be bad probably you know people would ask me questions and who knows that may happen eventually anyway maybe inevitable but until that point don't do anything bad and still claim to be mark Sargent if you can help it thanks this one's called antarctica hello mark i want you to know that if it were not for you i might be a bit happier than i currently am you did such a fine job with your Flat Earth videos, I got hooked and after much investigation became a believer. Now what? Not even one of my friends is willing to even discuss it with me. Who am I supposed to talk to about this? Thanks a lot. Okay, now a serious question. Since Antarctica is not a continent as we were all taught and it is it actually forms the circumference of our world, how is it possible for the deep government to keep trespassers away? That's over 50,000 miles that needs to be patrolled, no? Surely someone would go take a look without being turned away, right? I am starving for new information, getting awfully tired of the same old stuff on YouTube. Well, take good care and let me know if you discover anything new, will you? Thanks, Tom Wright. And yeah, Tom, let me let me address your last part first, which is... It, I, look, depending on when you get into Flat Earth, I still envy the new people that go in right now because there's a ton of content out there. Me, when I got into it, there was not that much out there at all. I, it was very, very limited. It was thin on the ground, as it were. So don't don't complain about that you can't find new stuff in Flat Earth. There's still a lot of content out there, a lot of new people and a lot of great channels. When it comes to Antarctica, though, the think of it this way there's so much natural negative reinforcement built into antarctica that most people aren't going to go there anyway i mean 99 percent, 99.99 percent of the population doesn't go anywhere near antarctica because as you get closer to it the temperature you know the the seas get rougher the oceans get really horrible and then as you're approaching it the the water gets cold enough that salt water starts freezing which i believe is like 15 degrees and then once you get to Antarctica, the coastline, remember, is like 150, 200 feet up, straight up wall of ice. Then you get on top of that and you got a big plateau. Remember, Antarctica is a very, very unusual con continent. It's a high desert, technically. It just go and it keeps sloping up and up until, you know, the whole thing is like cap is, is what they say. The average is like 14,000 feet elevation. That's amazing considering altitude sickness kicks in at about half that distance. So, no, no, you don't have to guard it much. I mean, yeah, you send some planes, some helicopters, some ships here and there. And yeah, it's a lot of coastline. Use a multinational Navy, share the wealth, share the workload. And that's all you really need to do. You, it's not as hard as you might think. Because remember, the continent on its own, without anyone there whatsoever, just screams, go away. I, mean, I don't, I don't want to go there. And I'm part of the Flat Earth Movement. I still think it'd be a horrible thing to go there. This next one is called Realization. Hi, Mark. I love this topic. So much so that when I was first in school and got to the stage in, got to the stage in learning science and geography. Remember, guys, I'm reading this verbatim. In my science class, I was told to stop talking and disrupting the class, not because I was boisterous or rude and nasty, but because I didn't believe what I was being taught 
and question too many things. By the way, I'm correcting some of the spelling errors here. Uh, just because you use spell check, you might want to read it through and check it for grammar. Uh, reason being, one of the questions I asked was if this is science class and it being science theory in pursuit of truth through experimentation or testing, why is there only one view I am perceiving or being made to take in and nothing to test in opposition of any kind? I said I may as well be learning fancy words or language and sentence formation than testing anything. My words didn't go down very well. I told, I was told to just be mute and listen after that point I was bored. Me trying to make a model of what I thought it looked like didn't go down very well at all. Or my test I gave to a teacher on a clear ball and told her to find north, south, east, and west. And while having to imagine the middle point, then said, now which angle do you start from? And from what point? out oh and while it is spinning i was told this is ridiculous sit down <laughs> i said i know do you not get my point i viewed it this way since young and still I, when i get to the last name i'm gonna die here and still do even before checking out flat earth videos i just like to say you have a lovely voice and i love how much effort and passion you put into your videos smiley face i appreciate an, inquis an inquisitive person like yourself with me being just as much. A person who sees things creativ creatively, logically, mathematically, spiritually, sensibly, functionally, among a few others, without being permanently put down by Borg-minded people going round in circles like snakes eating their own tails. Hmm, it's good. Haha, -ha, sorry for the bad references. Anyway, keep up the good work. Much appreciated, XOX. And I've got no name on this. Anything up in the email? Nope. So thank you, whoever that was. I don't know who that was. This one's called Infighting. Mark, Flat Earth, Fallout, and Infighting pretty much full on at the moment between some of the bigger channels. Again, remember, the, these emails are pretty old. I'm, I'm falling way behind. This is one from at least a month ago. I think it's just growing pains expected considering the magnitude of the topic, which means things will eventually come right and the movement will get stronger, I hope. LOL. That's from Greg. Thanks, Ray. Like-minded, this one's called. Like-minded. Mark, where do I find forums of like-minded people? Erica. Different places. Uh, if you want the live forums, then go just type in Flat Earth into YouTube and set the filter to live, and you'll find a lot of great people. I mean, that's live chats. Boom, boom, boom. Or you go to Facebook. A lot of, a lot of great ones on Facebook. Just type in Flat Earth into Facebook. You will find some groups, some, some big ones out there. If you get a chance, those are the two places I would go if you were looking for forums. That's from Erica. Thanks, Erica. This one's called Flat Earth. I get a lot of those. Hi, Mark. I just stumbled upon a video about rail guns. I pasted the link below. At the four minute mark, they start to show a 3D graphical model of a ship in the ocean, and as they zoom out, they show a grid on the water and the horizon. Well, sure enough, they are using a flat model. Well, of course they are, in the firing solution computer, but to show that in their advertisements, I was surprised. Just figured I'd share this tidbit and maybe do a segment on it. And the YouTube, and that's from Kevin Cuss. <laughs> Love it. Uh, the video is called U.S. Military's Most Powerful Cannon, the Electromagnetic Railgun Shoots 100 Miles. And that was posted December 8th of last year. So thank you for that, Kevin. It's good stuff. This one's called Block Video. Hey, Mark, in case you don't already know, Perry Productions blocked your Katy Perry Flat Earth reference video. And yes, and, which is amazing considering it's only like, what, five or six seconds of her talking and it's secondhand through a cell phone, a cell phone taking a movie of a monitor. <clears throat> and it's very quiet. The, the quality is, is not very good by by any YouTube standards. And yet, yeah, yeah, Katy Perry, but it's, it's Katy Perry. It's one of the few mainstream people out there in the media that actually scores higher, is trending higher than Flat Earth right now. So she carries more weight than us, let's put it this way. So yeah, Carrie, Katy Perry Productions went and, it, and I just mirrored it off a mirror and they blocked it. Now I put in for a, it wasn't copyright struck or anything, they just blocked it. 
but I put in for a fair use act on that one, and I don't know if they're going to overturn it. It's it's interesting. Although I will say this: the uh, the Trailer Park Boys, who hit me for a copyright, and it wasn't their fault. I don't blame the Trailer Park Boys. It was the company they hired to monitor their YouTube. I was working with some intern. His name was I think Kevin. Had been in his twenties, just an idiot, a guy that was obviously stuffed into lockers as a child. He he was doling out. Uh, um, copyright strikes like like just candy like a Pez dispenser bam 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 he was hitting anybody he could and he mistook me for somebody else and I claimed fair use on it I mean look my, my YouTube channel we I report flat earth stuff so if you as a celebrity talk about flat earth I'm gonna put it in there so anyway it was overturned of course it was I mean yeah it was a little longer than I had expected because I didn't think the trailer park boys were gonna talk about it for seven minutes but it was interesting. So anyway, hopefully I'll get the Katy Perry one back. It's blocked, but I'm crossing my fingers. I'm not really hopeful, though. It's it's her. I mean, same thing with, like, Taylor Swift. She could probably do the same thing to me. Although I wouldn't feel as bad because I like Taylor Swift. Moving on. This one's called... Watch the Truth We Can't Handle on YouTube. That is Impossible Channel. And the YouTube video is called, literally... I'm just clicking in on it. The truth we can't handle, dot, dot, dot. And let me see here. Pretty cool to think about, but yet again, why would our creator source make a footstool where he would have to look under? I just want to know your thoughts. Thanks for everything, man. Keep it up. I love you and Patricia. Yeah, again, whatever this place is, I don't think it's just one dimensional, and I, literally and figuratively, meaning it's part planetarium, part planetarium, um, part amusement park ride, part ant farm, part petri dish, part experiments. Could be a footstool. I, I know that people have mentioned it's you know God's footstool. I, I don't, yeah, does he put his feet on it? Not sure. Could it be a literal footstool? I don't know. Could it be an aquarium? Could be all sorts of fun things. But I think it's not just one of those things. I think it's a combination. Uh, remember, a higher technology is going to have efficiencies functioning on multiple levels. So This one's called Flat Earth Videos. Dear Mark, I really enjoyed your first video, and I'm watching the rest of them as I write this email. I got hip to this topic a couple of years ago, and I can't let it go. Thank you for your time the time you've spent producing these videos for people like me continued success creston harrington very welcome enjoy doing it honestly did not think that it would catch on to the rate where we are now it's it's amazing amazing the how far we we've come to where again front page of the denver post front page uh, it, it took a while but it's fantastic, and they're running more articles even now, which is which is fantastic. This one's called Dick Bird. Mark, I was acquainted with Admiral Bird's son Dick back around 1982 in South Boston. In my opinion, he was quite eccentric. There were boxes and boxes of his father's records and artifacts in a warehouse on Binford Street. I rented band rehearsal space there. I was robbed which led to our search that uncovered the boxes. Now, I wonder if those boxes may have contained proof of Flat Earth. There was even a stuffed emperor penguin that he used to keep in a hotel in Chicago when it was alive. The story was, the penguin couldn't handle the warmer climate and died. I didn't know Dick was a Navy lieutenant until I read of his death in the newspaper. They found him in another decaying warehouse full of his father's things in Somerville, Massachusetts. Pretty convoluted story. Someday I hope to write about it. Missed opportunity based on today's theory. Maybe, maybe not. Regards, Jimmy from Boston. That's really interesting. I like that. Yeah, you, Admiral Bird's story is interesting. His son's story, not as interesting, but it's good. Yeah, and his son's not around either. All his descendants are gone, from what I understand. This one's called Watch This Video Before It Gets Deleted on YouTube. It's pretty cool. And I click on it. And it's not deleted. And it's from, that is impossible, called, it's literally called, watch this video before it gets deleted. Okay. So if you guys want to check that out, might be kind of cool. Moving on. This one's called New Findings. Mark, been listening to Josh Peck on Hagman and Hagman. 
He interviewed Rob Skiba, who gave compelling Bible evidence while examining the facts. I'm still evaluating, but this is a stickler issue which is difficult to convey to close friends and family. Anything new you have discovered, you might recommend. Appreciate your efforts. That's from Thomas. Uh, yeah, Thomas, anything <clears throat> that I like, I, I will, you know, I'll, I'll give it a thumbs up. I never give thumbs down. Uh, in fact, I didn't even do that on IPS's last thing where he told people to thumbs down, I don't think. But uh, I'll either I'll either just give it a thumbs up if I, if I if I think it's pretty cool, or if it's really cool, I will try to move it into my flatter shortlist for new people. When there's only I try to keep that one under thirty if I get a chance. I think there's like twenty four in there now, and I trade you know try to put in the the best and and brightest in there. And for, for again, it's for new people. So if you're trying to show somebody that's brand new to the flat Earth a list of compelling new flat Earth videos. Those are the ones I'd point them at. This next one's called Tim Alberino. Hey, Mark, thanks for all your hard work in research. Have you ever looked into the works of Tim Alberino? Nephilim and giants, the floods, etc. I am very analytical with flat earth, the Bible, space, etc. I think you are very articulate with making the connection between Flat Earth and the Bible. I like to listen to Tim as well. Although he believes Flat Earth is a psyop, he is educated in other respects. I would like to hear your take on his works and what you think about the inevitable political agenda set in motion to execute the ultimate deception. Again, thanks for all you do to enlighten Travis. Thanks, Travis. And I will try to look into Tim, A-L-B-U-R-I-N-O. Tim Alberino. This one's called Please Clean It Up. Oh, I think this is like a back and forth, but I'll, I'll finish this one. It's from Steve. Mark, thank you. I get your point about using a current example, but could you possibly bleep the F-bomb out of it? I am not technical at all. I would not know how to do that, so maybe that is too difficult, but it is a thought. I am a PC person, but I want my family to be able to listen to Flat Earthers and not have to hear that word. I know I can count on you. Thanks again, Steve Harris out of Minnesota. Yeah, I do what I can. I, I, 90, 90 something percent of my videos don't really have any profanity in them. Uh, when I do Patricia's show on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, I try to keep it clean. When I do Strange World, I try to keep it clean. However, I'm honestly bleeping stuff takes so long in the editing process. It, it, it makes videos way, way longer. To, to deal with because then you have to listen through the whole thing and you know, or take notes like time and date stamp you know and then you're like then you're not listening to the people that are talking to you at the other end when people give me calls then you're just like listening for profanity so I, I do what I can I, I don't generally endorse someone that's it, that swears a lot but at the same time I get it look it's a it's a passionate world and it is not a g-rated world you know this though I, but I, I will do what I can but I'm not going to try to turn it into a rap album where I just start, start bleeping stuff out. This one's called Lunar Eclipse. Hello, Mark. My name is Emily, and I'm a recent convert to the Flat Earth Society. I've been doing a lot of research in the past couple of months and I'm convinced the Earth is and always was flat. There is one thing that I do not understand. I hope that you may be able to help. I have been trying to find explanations for the lunar eclipse. Oh, boy. Here we go. Most explanations describe a third object covering the moon from view. I don't buy into that theory. What do you think? I haven't been able to find anything solid on the subject. Thank you in advance, Emily. Uh, Emily, I think it's tied directly to the fact that the moon is self-illuminated. If we're talking about a you know lunar eclipse, like a blood moon, uh, it, it's the same process. So a waxing and waning crescent is just the same as a blood moon, meaning it's just a display. The... Uh, uh, the moon generates its own light. It's a cold light. You guys can test that out. And if the moon is self-illuminated, that means it's just part of a projection system, which means you can do anything on it, which means, again, I don't worry about the sky too much. In an enclosed system, the sky is completely unlimited. There's nothing that can't be done up there. So it's only when you don't have a dome, if it's not enclosed, that you have to start kind of dancing around more, which is why I do it, because sometimes I'm lazy. That's not often to be a perfectly honest but all right this one is called 210 from 109 interesting title hey there mark i was that caller from oh 210 area code who talked or rather say rambled 
on about states of fluid. I was really nervous, so sorry about that stammering. I didn't notice any stammering. I saw that you're not very religious according to your site, so I figured you would be one to put all opinions aside to hear truth. I got a very good news on the truth and all of the religions of the world and how they are used to suppress our true purpose in life. It's something like you have never heard before, yet it has always been there. The flat earth deception is or was the biggest tool in the biggest deception of all mankind. The elite have been hiding flat earth for a reason, and it's not money. I have proof and will have physical evidence very soon. Thought you might want to be on the forefront. It's coming out either way. The elite have been ready, so I thought I should be too. Wouldn't you? Through my ignorance, I was lost. Through my ignorance, I will find truth. That's by unknown. From one crazy guy to another crazy guy, let's talk crazy. Hope to hear from you, Mark. Shalom. Uh, yeah. Look, religion isn't the, the complete answer on anything. Nobody's got the complete answer on everything. Although, I will say, look, I was raised born-again Christian. Fell away from it when I got to college, and then when I got into Flat Earth, came back around. And by the way, if you guys are noticing my S's are a little, little more drawn out or they sound a little different, it's because I bit my tongue two nights ago in bed the, the very tip of my tongue <laughs> and so but i but i can still talk so i'm trying to try to fight through it i'm not going to try to numb it or anything so i'm i'm kind of modifying what i do with my tongue so it's not like if i sound a little bit different it's not like i was replaced with a nearly exact replica so don't come up with any new conspiracies for that this one's called have you seen this before Mark, uh, let's see, night balloon launch, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for all you do. I live in Bellingham and work in Anacortes. Oh, cool. I used to take the Anacortes Ferry to Canada, Victoria, quite a bit. We are very similar and would love to meet you and see how I could help and talk about life. I have been a flat earther since 2012. Ha, <laughs> really, have you? Let me know if you have a moment to meet Paul Duckworth. And Paul... Thank you for that. And there might actually be a meetup, but I want to do it in groups. Unfortunately, I just can't run off and, and meet everybody that, that wants to meet me in the Seattle area. But what uh, what may happen is there may be a Seattle meetup. Uh, the HBO guys are, are kind of bugging me to say, look, we want to do something up there, but we don't want to just shoot you. We want to shoot kind of an event around you. And it's like, oh, okay, fine. So we'll do a Seattle meetup. And if that happens, you will just keep your ears peeled and I'll, I'll put it on my channel hopefully with enough notice but we'll find out this one is called flat earth billboard on coast to coast site mark the flat earth billboard was posted on the coast to coast site today also attached a funny pic manny oh nice and he said so yeah if you guys want to check it out go to george and in the coast to coast site and the flat earth billboard i believe from philadelphia from the one outside the airport was posted there a while back this is a few weeks old now. I'm trying to get through my emails, I swear. Uh, takes forever. Okay, this one's called Urgent for Me. Please answer, I'm stuck. Uh, Mark, if you read this on air, no name, please. I am, as you call, a closet flat earther. See? Lots of people are. I'll be honest, I'm trying to wrap my head around that. On a side note, I live in Ontario and often eat at a place in Hamilton called Hutch's. Amazing fish and chips if you're ever in the city. You can easily see the base of the CN Tower in Toronto from this restaurant. It just dawned on me. Check out the photo attached. No P900 needed for this. You can see across plainly any clear day. I also added a couple other photos in case you want to add them to the slideshow. Not that you don't have enough already. This whole flat earth thing brought me back to God and I'm really fighting to keep believing. The whole Polaris thing being not visible from the southern hemisphere has got me a bit tied up though. Any images or help on that would be awesome. By the way, thanks for actually responding to emails. I think Eric Dubay would just send me a yoga mat. Ha ha. <laughs> That's a new one. I don't know if he'd actually send you a yoga mat. So to, thank you for the pictures and everything. To this Again, the, the Southern Hemisphere, not hard in an enclosed system. Because if a planetarium is large enough, meaning a dome, an enclosed system, a firmament, whatever you want to call it, then you're going to need multiple display systems. Very advanced stuff, and which means you're going to have, depending on your region, the stars are going to be tailored for your region. Just like we do in computer simulations now. 
no different than what we do in simulation. We, in fact, we've been able to do that in simulations now using instancing and phasing for the last 15 years. And if we can do that now, and we've been able to do this for a, a little while now, imagine what someone with an advanced technology can do. That's all really, you really have to... I, I don't know why people just keep trying to, to do it without an enclosed system. It's so much easier if you if you go down that road. But, to each their own. This one's called, That's Interesting. Hi, Mark. I just watched the video you posted on YouTube titled, They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. Wow. You've opened my eyes to a whole new way of, think, of looking at things. Thank you for sharing this information that you've obviously spent countless hours researching. I'm kind of in shock. I've always been one to question things and not just go with what I've been told, especially if, I, if it didn't make sense. I just wanted you to know that I appreciate your time and effort and we'll, we'll go back to watch more of your videos. I'm intrigued. Have a great day. Michelle Vila. Thank you very much. And... I always love compliments but again remember with that video they're hiding God with the greatest lie ever that's not even my channel that I that was when in the early days when I made the clues I didn't actually have a playlist for it. I didn't even know what a playlist was to be honest so people before people finally bugged me and said, yeah turn it into a playlist some other people had already cr compiled all the clues one through I think 11 at that time and made them into movies. One of them was called, one of the bigger ones was called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. I think that's pushing three million hits. And the other one is called Under the Dome Full Documentary, completely different channel. Also has about three million hits. I think I was over three million hits. And the reason why they grabbed them, one of the reasons was it was a Creative Commons license. In fact, most of the videos I put out there still have Creative Commons license. And when you do that, you can you can take the hits and get the money and whatever. I mean, it's not a lot of money, although when you have millions of hits, it, it does add up. That's for sure. So great. Hopefully, uh, Michelle Vila found my channel. Hopefully, maybe I'll put that in a pile and let her know that there's actually another channel besides that one. This one's called German National TV says the Earth is flat. Hi, Mark. This evening, MDR. Otherwise known, oh boy, there's no way I'm going to try to pronounce that. Mitte Deutscher Rundfunk. Oh. Anyway, MDR made a broadcast bashing conspiracy theories. They started their broadcast with the sentence, the earth is flat, and then in German. They pulled the video from their website, but I captured it before and have put it here. If you want, you can use part on your YouTube channel or, or so. Maybe I will grab that. Now, the two FE-related remarks I have. They did, after the first sentence, not speak anymore about Flat Earth. Two, why do they show the globe and not the Flat Earth map? Oh, wait, that would maybe make the people start thinking serious about it. Greetings from Belgium, Samuel. Thank you, Samuel, for doing that. Sorry it took so long to get back to your email. And I did actually, I do remember clicking on this back three or four weeks ago. So thank you for that. And I don't think I'm going to mirror it because it's in German. Most people wouldn't get it. German is not something that, that Americans generally get taught. The Spanish, French, yeah, German, a distant third. Even though I'm mostly German, I, I understand it's not the, uh, the most fun language in the world. Let's see here. This one's called Thank You, with spelling correction. Dear Mark and Patricia, Mark, you are a man of your word. Oh, right. This is the, this, Remember the, the email I brought up earlier about the... Um, guy that didn't want me to have any swearing on my channel. Mark, you're a man of your word. You said you would bring up my letter asking you not to use the F word on your show and see if Patricia would as well, and you did. I just watched The Secret Show 168 tonight, and not only did you read the letter, your reply, and my reply back, but you also discussed it. You and Patricia both treated the letter so fairly, and I thank you for that. I am not a prude. I am an ex-Marine Corps sergeant, and I can swear with anyone. I just choose not to. Okay, I do once in a while. I really see you, you two as the main leaders of the Flat Earth Movement and as the standards standard others can try to emulate. You talked about all the drama in Flat Earth tonight. The cool thing is that you two don't participate in that drama. You two are also not negative, nor do you rip others. All to your credit and reasons I like to listen to you. I also really think we need people like you and shows like yours that we can refer children to. Mark, remember the nine-year-old boy who talked to you on your show? He told you how he asked his teacher to show an experiment and demonstrate curved water? That was great. 
kids like that can be at the beginning of a dialogue starting in the public schools. I really appreciate your commitment to a warning if there is profanity, and I know you nearly never use it, and that is another reason you both sound classy and get the respect that others do not. Patricia, thank you too for supporting, keeping it clean for classy reasons as well, even uh, if it's out of habit. Those are good habits you got from your father, from your time working at his radio station. Because everyone talks like that is not a reason we have to, right? The bottom line is, I remain a loyal fan, regular listener, and a daily promoter of the two of you. One of my guiding one of one of my guiding sayings is that that has never let me down is this you never regret taking the high road thanks again mark and patricia you both rock steve harris minnesota thanks steve again and i remember when patricia read that and it took me a while again we've been really really busy but we're getting around to it finally this one's called email you read from knoxville tennessee Mark, you read an email on air during the most recent Strange World from a guy named Jeremy in Knoxville, Tennessee. I was wondering if you could share me with me his email address. I live in Knoxville and have a small group of flat earthers here, five of us so far, and I just wanted to reach out to Jeremy to see if he's interested in joining our group. I know you're busy, so no rush. Have a great week. JM. And what I'll do is, anyone that wants to do a group, I'm just going to read your email address on this show, and then people can jump on it. So if anyone out in Tennessee, the guy who just wrote this email, his name's John, his email address is jmartvol at yahoo.com. So jmartvol at yahoo.com. Thank you very much for that. This one's called the Heliocentric PT Formation. My Mark, my name is Philip Mussolino. 154 Lincoln Avenue. <laughs> I wanted to run something by you. This is what bothered me. Not many people actually put their actual physical address and phone number at the beginning of the email, but I'm not going to read the entire thing for you. This is what bothered me with the heliocentric model for years, but I have a hard time articulating it, and my video making ability consists of the start button on my GoPro. I was in the infantry in the Marines from 83 to 87. Long story short, we used to have a way of running PT. Oh, physical fitness. Actually, was it physical fitness? No, it's physical training. That's what that's what PT stands for, right? Uh, with a twist for difficulty. The platoon would be in a column of twos running forward. The last two guys would peel off and orbit the formation while it was jogging. Yeah, they, they do this in track um, practice all the time. Sometimes we would go two or three times around. That was about the extent of anyone's physical fitness, and we were in the best shape in the world. Now, to my point, to actually do this physically, you can understand the forces involved. To come up from the back of a formation that was moving around seven to eight miles an hour takes a sprint that is nothing but full exertion. But when you reach the front to keep the orbit going, you have to run in two directions that really pushes it, and you have to go to the left while sprinting and then let off to less than a jog on the opposite side of the formation. Here it is just barely any exertion, and you get your breath for a second while the formation moves forward, the rear comes up fast. Then it is run to the right while pushing forward and hitting the accelerator, like putting the hammer down. Now my point in the heliocentric model that would mean the Earth has to go all different speeds going in different directions and and depending on the angle of its elliptic it would have to go 93 million miles in front of the sun that is moving at its speeds to co complete this perfect orbit of timing for seasons and all the rest to get a feeling of what i'm saying here if someone were to go down a three-line highway with a tractor trailer and just for simplicity's sake go 50 miles an hour and have a vehicle with an rpm gauge circle the rig you can see how it would have to accelerate and decelerate and so on. This jumbled mess of physical forces cannot be explained by some magical formula called gravity. It just cannot work. Now add the rest of the planets and moons and comets and all that. The whole idea is preposterous if all you ever do is try to circle a moving object. Now while you do this, point a scope at something high up like the top of a bridge and pretend it's Polaris. Keep the scope on it the whole time. Oh, I forgot. The best of all, spin in a circle while you're doing all of this. Here I am preaching to the choir, but you get it. I wish I could make a video explaining all this. I know someone will eventually. 
All one has to do is attempt it once and you will see my point. Love your work. Thanks for taking the time to read this. Respect, respectfully, Phil. And thank you, Phil, for writing that. And yeah, all, all those forces, all the speeds that are happening in the solar system. Let's break them down real quick. The Earth spinning at a thousand miles an hour plus at the at the equator. The Earth going around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour. The solar system moving sideways like a shotgun pattern through the galaxy going half a million miles an hour. And that galaxy supposedly going millions of miles an hour through the universe. All these motions, all these things happening simultaneously. And yet we see no parallax ever. And I know science is going to come back and say, oh, there's so much distance. It's so much distance that we're not going to see it in our, you know, in, in a day, a month, a year, a lifetime. It's like, all right, fine. How about a century? How about a millennia? The, the, the constellations are still there. Last time I checked, they haven't changed. So when does the parallax happen exactly? How long does it take? When does Taurus the bull not become Taurus anymore? When do these stars change? You tell me. Science. This one's called Sail Around 55 Degrees South. Mark, what if we sailed a yacht around 55 degrees south? What would that const would that constitute an interesting proof? Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Possibly. Although I would I don't think you can go past 60. Although the the better test, from what I understand, it although it's tough because you have to go around you have to fly. You can't use a boat. But you, um, you fly a little bit above the equator and a little bit ab below the equator in the same plane all the way around and see if it takes the same amount of time. It shouldn't. Although it's tricky because if you're going to use a plane, no pilot in his right mind is going to try to use it without GPS. And GPS was invented by the United States government, Department of Defense. It's a military system. And it's going to tell you what it wants you and what it wants you to know. And if they have any, any head up, heads up on what you're, what you're going to do, they're going to, you know, they're going to shift the results. That's what I would do anyway. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Hey, Mark, saw your email in one of your videos and decided to contact you to discuss something that I haven't seen yet on any Flat Earth video. Why has no one discussed the fact that at the elevation above sea level does not take into account the supposed curvature? Example, Alice Springs in at least 900, is, is 900 kilometers from any ocean and only 500 meters above sea level, yet should be a lot above that. Do you see what I get what I mean? Also, I have seen people discuss the North Star Polaris, but haven't seen anyone put the argument that it is visible every night of the year and always above the North Pole, regardless of the Earth's supposed rotation around the sun and the apparent lean of the North Pole towards the sun. The summer away from the sun in the winter and spring and autumn is vertical. He actually didn't use any punctuation in there. And yet, Polaris is still directly above the North Pole. Does this make sense? Have a nice day and let me know what you think. Thanks. And yeah, actually, both those topics have been have been discussed, especially Polaris. There's a bunch of it. Type in Flat Earth Polaris. You'll get the answers uh, you need there. And as far as the, the sea level thing, yeah, that's tricky because, yes, there should be a whole bunch of curvature. At, you know, they call it sea level. I, I know what you're I know what you're what you're saying there. That actually has been covered there as well. But it's it's tricky to explain to people. Tri tricky for a lot of people to get their head around. So it's definitely not one of my favorites to approach people with this one's called wow check this out about the trailer park boys flat earth debate did you know the actor who plays bubbles the guy who was sitting in the middle during the podcast is personal friends with astronaut chris hadfield see attached picture also maybe you don't know just about how popular that show is popular on netflix worth checking out start from season one work your way up well worth it yeah i literally knew and i feel bad because i absorbed a lot of media over the years but when it comes to lowbrow comedy, no offense, Trailer Park Boys, but I do, it's not my thing. It's just not my thing. I know it's a great, great, cool thing for a lot of people, but it's not mine. So I didn't even know, one, I didn't know those guys were Canadian. Two, I didn't know they'd been on Netflix for years and years. And so when it was first sent to me, it, when they addressed Flat Earth, and they talked about it again for like seven, pushing eight minutes. 
a, a little clip and I put it on my channel and they came after me for it. And, it was, it was, and the guy, one of the guys that was, it wasn't one of the, the main guys, obviously. It was, it was the team that was monitoring the YouTube stuff. He was giving me crap because he said, oh, I, he, he basically mistook me for John Laban. Which was amazing because John Lebon also got smacked for it, and I think he fought back more aggressively than I did. And so this guy was was actually sent me a letter he was supposed to send John Lebon, and I I write back to him. I'm going and, and I figured it out, even though he didn't mention John Lebon's name in the email. I figured out what what had happened there. What happened was I'll I'll just, I'll just clue you guys in right now. What happened was is that John Lebon took my trailer park video. I know he took mine because I mirror imaged it, so everything was reversed, and there was a few things in the back wall, the, the backwards letters. And he did a commentary on it where he was stopping it every five seconds and you know kept calling me Mackie Boy and blah blah blah. And when he was doing that, he kept he said my name enough times that subliminally it sunk into the YouTube guy's head, who was who was who was doling out copyright strikes. And he thought that that video was mine. And, and I knew this because when he was writing me, we were exchanging emails. He kept saying, well, you know, that other video did where you were stopping it every five seconds and making a narrative. That's fine. And I didn't want to correct him. I was like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, because I'm trying to get through this. And then he finally, whatever John did to him, I have no idea. But he turned, the other, that guy turned around and just started just tongue lashing me. What is wrong with you? And and so I wrote back. I said, "Dude, I don't know who you've been fighting with since Tuesday. It is not me. I am not the guy that that comes back and and writes you know super aggressive emails most of the time." So, and we got sorted out in the end. But yeah, anyway, the Trailer Park Boys. It's, I'm going. Hey, videos back up now. Super great, fantastic. But I don't think I'm going to be using them anytime soon. And so if they talk about flat Earth again, do not send me the video. So, yeah, because the guy who sent it to me, I love this. He sends me the video. He puts it on his channel, puts the whole episode on his channel, sends it to me, and then as soon as I grabbed out the Flat Earth clip off of it, he deletes it off his channel. <laughs> it's like, what? Hopefully he didn't copy it. Well, I think he would have told me. In fact, I know he didn't get copyright struck for me because I ended up telling him. He's going, where happened to the video? I'm going, I got struck for it, dude. Anyway, sorry. My little rant in the middle of my emails. Anyway, if you want, check out the Trailer Park Boys. Ty type in Trailer Park Boys Flat Earth. Great little thing. It's back up now after being down for three weeks where those guys talked about Flat Earth and they didn't tear it apart either. It was a, it was a solid debate. I liked it. Lowbrow as it was. Okay, this one's called Boston Common Frog Pond Meetup. Hey, Mark, love all your work and what you have all done for the community. I've been following most of you for about two years now and just disappointed that there hasn't been much up here, so I'm taking it upon myself to set something up. Started my channel last week doing street interviews in Boston Common, and it was way too fun to not commit more to our ever-expanding community. Mark, could you please share my video or do one of those meetup vids? I'm thinking Boston Common Frog Pond. And this is back in June 24th, so sorry guys, you're going to have to wait for the next one. But I, I know they're doing hangouts and stuff, I, I know they're going to do more. Uh, because it's free and open to the public, we'll get a lot, could really organize some street activism. I was just one guy and I got at least 10 people to use their heads. Imagine what we could do. Uh, stay flat friends, space is fake. Fantastic. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, if you're up in the Boston area, look for stuff. You, in fact, you can look up the any trade any meetup that I do. I leave on my channel, so just type in Flat Earth Meetup Boston, and you'll see the trailer. and And those guys did some fun stuff up there. This one's called Mark. I hope you look into this. Hi, Mark. Just found your website and watched the video. It's very interesting to me. I admit I'm still on the fence about the flat Earth notion. I'm not a scientist. However, I did find it interesting that as I watched your videos, I recalled a man that used to be on TV years ago, but then he faded out of the media. I looked him up and reread through some of his info. I hope you take some time to look into his biosphere information. I really think it's related. The man's name is Dr. Baugh, B-A-U-G-H, from Texas. Here are some of the links I found his info on. I also sent you a picture document that mentions what his biosphere tech discovered. And of course, NASA got involved later on. Thanks for thinking outside the box. Sincerely, Annette Trent. Thank you, Annette. Awesome. This one's 
called NASA Teams with IKEA. Mark, Google NASA deal IKEA. You'll see that NASA is striking a deal with IKEA for furniture from Mars. My first thought was, why not? They had a deal with Mattel when they built a built the lunar lander. <laughs> it's funny, and uh, yeah, I actually remember this email when it came in, and he's not lying. Type in NASA IKEA, and you will see that NASA is actually cutting a deal with IKEA. Not lying because IKEA is going to send furniture Mar to Mars because well, yeah, we're colonizing Mars. You tell me how we're colonizing it without advanced technology. Without another race helping us, we're not going anywhere. Even if it was a globe, we're not going anywhere. We just don't have the tech for it. Um, let's see here. Let's see if there's anything else. Ronald McDonald map of outer space. Somebody sent it to me. Yep, Ronald McDonald space, where he's on literally on every planet, doing something on those planets. Awesome. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Okay, remind me again how and why the idea of a globe has been conceived and filtered into general belief, and just how are we going to switch this all back to re recognizing re the truth of the matter? Is that a word? I don't think it's a word. Feeling isolated and short-resourced and need to do more than just watch YouTube videos all day as I am fairly convinced. Matt. Well, the first thing is we got to let everybody know. That's the first thing. Get the word out. Tell everybody you can, but don't lose friends. Well, you know, if you don't care about losing friends and family, that's one thing. Just be careful when you're out there. Don't don't get thrown and thrown out by your wife or husband. Don't do that. Get the word out. That's the first thing I always try to tell people. This one's called confidence. Mark and Patricia, I was just re-listening to the discussion you two had concerning my comment on the F-bombs. Is this him again? Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read three by the same guy. No, sorry. I think we already covered the, the, the profanity issue. This one's called, hi, we must talk. Hello, my friend that I have not met in this life anyways. I would absolutely love to talk to you. You are open-minded, and I think you may understand that I am a counselor. I am the counselor that Jesus said he would send. In the past, I was Eve. It's going to be one of those emails, isn't it? The number nine, unconditional love. I fought it for nine months as I learned, un as I learned necessary lessons, and here I am. I am to pronounce the truth to the world. I should have like an angel music playing in the background while I'm doing this. In the proper time and through words, words are water, fire, of course, was used before this an inter interesting group of open-minded individuals have entered my world in the past nine months my metaphysical advisor mentioned you he said i might not understand your truth he doesn't know me quite well enough yet apparently he is brilliant but he has trust issues in this regard as his spirituality is lacking he is trying too hard however he's catching on enough to know i wouldn't completely discount your truth Funny thing is, when I was a kid, I was given a signed picture of the astronauts by someone who later said he wished someone would figure out the family secret. Turns out, there are many secrets. From the fact that I was an orphan born in a chicken coop, oh, wow, you, you're going to softball it in like that, really? To the way the world is manipulated by numbers, to the fact that the world is domed. One and one make three, two parallel lines meet in infinity and a third line that intersects a circle our dome shape i am the lion in the number 11 the lamb is not fully awakened but somehow somewhat close please call any time uh chris my wisdom soulmate and i would love to chat he is busy with his family however my time is led by god energy love gel as in angel Oh, your phone number is fabulous. I, of course, read signs from all the ages, sending you hugs from afar, but not that far. Kathy. Uh, well, Kathy, I don't know. I, you know what? I, I may wait till your second email on this. The first one was a little heavy-handed in the metaphysical world. It, um, I don't really even know how to respond to that one. 
But anyway, moving on. This one's called Flat Earth? Question mark. Mark, so you were the most convincing person on this subject, but I found your non-stop flights. Oh my god. He made it to clue seven and then looked up the flights. If you look into a non-stop flight, blah, blah, blah. Hang on, I'm just reading through. The question is... Uh, let's see here. So we'll get past the flight thing, because if you got to clue nine, he'll understand that. The other question I can't seem to wrap my head around the with the flat earth concept is that if we can't leave the dome due to vast amounts of radiation, then how can people survive going to Antarctica due to the dome that should be seemingly close to them while they're snooping around the continent. Wouldn't Admiral Byrd have died from radiation poisoning? I do agree with one thing, and that is that we never get all the information which how come of, how could some of this be a threat to national security? So we do need answers and we should never stop questioning. I agree with that last part. Wouldn't have Admiral Byrd have died from radiation poisoning? Because, oh, not necessarily. You're, you're assuming that the, the barrier, the outer market, is radioactive. I don't, I don't even know if it's that. May, may not be radioactive at all. I mean, remember, the Van Allen radiation belts were literally announced by Van Allen, Professor Van Allen, who worked for NASA. He was a NASA employee. And if they work for NASA, you basically can't believe anything they say at all. Ever. This one's called Lynette in California. Mark... Thank you so much for your two-hour YouTube Flat Earth video. I'm a born-again Christian, and this really opened my eyes even wider. I already knew about the moon landing and Stanley Kubrick, all of the media hoaxes, 9-11, JFK, so many lies, but then Satan is the big deceiver. Once again, thank you, Lynette. Very welcome, Lynette. Happy to do it. This one's called FAA Aircraft Dynamics Model. Hi, Mark. I thought you might want to talk about the FAA document, even if you haven't already, that explicitly states the observant reader will notice that the aircraft equations of motion were calculated assuming a flat Earth. And more very interesting points on page 32. And also NASA and you, and you guys could actually, this is FAA.gov. You can look it up. It's called the, the it's a PDF. You can just download from the FAA.gov. It's called Aircraft Dynamics Model dot PDF. Just look that up. You can grab it. Also, NASA and MITRE repeat the same flat, non-rotating Earth assumption. I'm pretty sure you've seen those already. I just haven't come across the FAA document on YouTube. That's awesome. Keep up the good work, Ted. Thanks, Ted. Yeah, that document's been circul circulating around for a while, but I'm glad you found it. Oh, let's see. Let's do like two more if we get a chance. This one's called ISS Question. You may use my name on the air. See, that's what you should do. Although most, I, I've yet to anyone say that I ruined their life because I actually said their name on air. Mark, the only footage I've ever seen of the ISS under construction was in the opening credits of Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs> Is that all they've got? Darren in La Crosse, Wisconsin. La Crosse, Wisconsin, which I actually had a family reunion back in the 90s. My my uh, family, the German family stock, S-T-A-A-K, uh, that's where they settled when they came here from, remember, before Germany, a little trivia question for you, what was Germany called before it was Germany? It was Prussia, P-R-U-S-S-I-A, and my family had to renounce the king of Prussia back when they had a king. So, yeah, that, that's the only thing the ISS has is as far as construction you're right they should have the most wonderful time lapse construction of this thing and they don't the the only thing they have is a simulation that was used for the beginning of the opening credits of star trek enterprise the series all right let's do maybe one more maybe one more does water curve this might be a good one mark hey i thought of an idea that's possibly been thought about but if not here it is get the longest rope as possible maybe tie multiple ropes together Tie it to a boat and connect it to a pole on the beach of a dock. So say you tie it to a boat at five feet off the water and then tie the rope to the pole five feet off the shoreline dock. Obviously, you need a lot of rope, but if the water curved, the rope would eventually touch the water somewhere in the middle. Ideally, you'd want the boat to reach just out of sight or over the curve. Hopefully, I explained it well enough. I don't know how feasible it is, but it's an idea. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, really tough. As far as the scientific test goes, 
really really tough because that 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 rope is going to sag and the longer it is the the more sag it's going to get although when you wouldn't have to go that far honestly you would only have to go well depending on how the high the boat is you know you know i'll look into that one i'm not gonna end i'm not gonna end the the thing on that though Let's see if we can find one more no uh, that one's too long let's uh you know what let's end it yeah let's let's do this one let's do this one and then we'll end it on this this one's called peculiar peculiar oh wow peculiar cannot draw earth 3d max hello mark Sargent. for career purposes please don't use my last name in the air i'm still ambivalent regarding the flatness of our land meaning i will see an experiment and some videos and think they're right it's flat and then some days later i'll be seeing something else and backtrack and think oh this can't be true it's a globe i thought i would reach out and share something with you mainly because i'm wondering if you've ever heard of this oddity from anyone else i also want you to know i enjoy your show professionally i work with autodesk software Mainly, I work in 3D Studio Max. I've worked with this software since 1996. I want to do my own little experiment. I want to draw up a 3D model of the Earth. I intend to see for myself the amount of curvature over distances as a simple double check of the curvature formula. Do you know what happens when you try to model the Earth in 3D Studio Max at actual size? You can't do it. I've attached two screenshots. One shows the globe scaled down. The radius is 3,959 miles or sorry, inches, works fine. When I scale it up to 3959 miles at the radius, you get the second screenshot. It essentially locks up the viewport and you cannot zoom out, meaning you can draw the earth, but you can't work with it at all. Now, I don't mean to be too paranoid here. It could be just the software has an arbitrary size limitation in the way some calculators only have so many digits on the screen. However, why would the software care if I wanted to make a very large object? The polygon count in the model isn't any higher in a full-size globe as opposed to a smaller scale down globe. I've checked it out and it seems that the software won't allow a smear model larger than 80,000 feet that is workable. This must have been a deliberate decision someone made, maybe since the software is intended for architectural type things. But I'm thinking, what if I wanted to make a computer model of the solar system? From what I am seeing, the only way to do that would be to scale everything down. I have the same problem if I just draw a circle as opposed to a 3D sphere with a radius of 20 million feet. However, the thought occurred to me, maybe someone doesn't want 3D software to make a globe at full size. I know, sort of a conspiracy point of view. I can tell you, it's the first thing I thought of when I typed in those numbers and the thing locked up. I think next I'm going to try AutoCAD. The curvature formula is good, by the way. It checks out when I use the scaled down version of the globe. Best from Texas. Keep up the good work. And I won't use his name. And to answer him before we end this, the, the emails. Yeah, just scale it down. And just remember what the what the relationship was when you scaled it down. In fact, I, I heard somebody else saying, oh, yeah, I can't do it at, at 8,000 miles across. It's like, okay, at the very least, you know, divide everything by 10. So if you want to see what the globe looks like or the earth looks like, you know, flat or globe, when you're when you're at a certain altitude, if, you're, if your software doesn't let you go that far, just scale down the numbers and remember the relationship. So if instead of, you know, start out by dividing everything by 10. So instead of 8,000 miles across, make it 800 miles across. And then just remember whatever altitude you're at on that globe, you can multiply, you know, divide it by 10 and, you know, or multiply it by 10. It'll give you the same sort of perspective. You know what I mean? Work, you make the software work for you. Don't, don't fight the, uh, the development team. Anyway, that's about it, guys. Remember, you can email me your questions at msargent, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I will try to read them here. Until next time, stay flat.